Hi, I'm Travis Shaddix. I'm the market manager for Harrell's. I'm here today to speak with you about incipient water stress. What is incipient water stress? Incipient is really just a fancy way of saying the initial signs of water stress. We're going to show you some examples with Bermuda grass and St. Augustine grass, some Bahia grass, and also a little bit of another grass, bamboo, where it's a little bit more visible to see these issues. When you first see these, these signs, there's a little bit of a discoloration of the grass. There's oftentimes people uh, say it's a grayish color or a bluish color to uh, turf, and some grasses even looks a little purple. Well, we want to describe to you and show you why it is those colors exist and show you at the end potential solutions for those issues. Let's go outside and take a look. Okay, so here we are. We're looking at a piece of bamboo. Bamboo is a grass, as we know. I like to use bamboo because the leaves are much larger than finely mowed turf grass. And so the issues with water, the issues with nutrients are much easier to see. You'll see the same issues as far as leaf curling and even with nutrient deficiencies as you will with turf grass. But it's so much easier to see as you see here that leaf is, is curled up while the other leaves are open up. It, and you're going to see this in the other turf grasses. When bamboo or any grass senses water stress, it curls that leaf up to conserve water. And when it does so, the transpiration rate reduces, the water in the plant is, is conserved, and then when it senses that the, the water stress in the soil is relieved, then it'll open that leaf back up. And oftentimes you'll see this occur in the late afternoon. In the morning time, the leaf will be wide open. In the late afternoon, it'll be, it'll be curled up and closed, even if you haven't irrigated. Okay, so here you see a, a really good example of the underneath side of the bamboo leaf where it's a different color of green. It's a, it's a different shade of green. You can kind of envision if there's millions of these little leaf blades in an area and they're all a little bit of a lighter colored green or a grayish color, you can see how that area would look a little off color or, or, or bluish or grayish depending on the underside of the leaf. And that's why there are differences in, in color with different turf grasses because bent grass may have a different color. It may respond in a different way than, you know, say, Tiff Dwarf or St. Augustine grass. Okay, here we are in a residential area where the swell or the space between the sidewalk and the road is showing leaf curling, it's showing water stress. And this is a good example because right next to the sidewalk, it's not droughty. And that is because the irrigation from the lawn is running across the sidewalk and providing water to the turf right along the sidewalk. But if you just move over maybe a foot, the turf in the exact same area is showing signs of drought stress. And that's because this swell here is not irrigated. So here's St. Augustine grass right next to the sidewalk. And we're going to show a similar example of what we just saw with bamboo. But it's going to become increasingly more challenging to determine that leaf curling influence, that drought stress, because the leaf blades on this grass are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. OK, so here's a normal St. Augustine grass leaf blade. It's opened up. It's transpiring at a, at a normal rate. It's, it believes it's in a healthy situation. but literally six inches away, pull a leaf blade out, and we have the exact same species, exact same size leaf, actually. And one is curled up, very little transpiration going on, and one is wide open. The reason for that is, as I explained earlier, the moisture next to the sidewalk is higher than the moisture just only inches away due to the variation in the irrigation of this area. And you can see if you try to open it up, I mean, it's, it's curled up. You could get your fingers down there and start to open these leaf blades up. It'll open right up. It'll be the same size leaf as the one that's already open. Okay, so here we are with, with Bermuda grass. This is 419. You see the leaf blade right here is completely open. It's in the middle of the afternoon, two o'clock, and it's growing full speed here. Transpiration is great. The turf believes it's in good health. Now, literally, without even moving a foot over, we start to see a little bit of a different color to the turf. This grayish appearance occurs, and, and there is a little bit of physiology involved with plant as far as the color. I mean, there is some movement of nutrients in some cases, especially in severe cases, but in these incipient cases, the color change is simply due to that leaf curl, and we see that here where the leaf blade that you saw just previous is a foot over was wide open. These are the same leaf blades, but they're curled up. And we see these little needles or pins and it manifests itself in that color change. Okay, so this, this area is what I would consider to be incipient water stress. As we move over a couple feet into this zone that I turned off, we get to an area that is a little bit past that incipient water stress. It's beyond just leaf curl. At this point, there are some physiological things going on. The grass is actually beginning to fade to yellow. It's more than likely beginning to translocate nutrients from the leaves to other part of the plant to stay alive. When you see this occur, parts of this turf probably won't survive simply reapplying water. That incipient water stress is simply a case of putting water on there, making sure the water is uniformly distributed in the soil, and it'll pop right back. But this part here is severe 
parts of this actually will die um, because it's beyond that incipient water stress. So here we see a, a little bit broader shot of a home lawn here where if you look about a halfway down, you'll see where that grass is a little bit of a grayish hue to it, where around the grass, around that little area, there's a, there's a darker green color to the turf. And that's, that's what we're referring to when we refer to these you know, grayish blue areas. The important part is recognizing that that is incipient water stress and understanding the solution is simply applying water. We don't need to go out and be applying insecticides and fungicides and all these things if that's not the problem. Bahia grass is a very drought tolerant turf species, but it can also show these signs as you see here. This area had not received any irrigation. There is no irrigation in this area and it had, it had not rained here for several weeks. And this is what it looks like. It's the exact same appearance. This is actually a pretty broad case of it as you see here, but it's the same exact issue where leaf curling. And in fact, a week later when it rained, these areas popped right back and you wouldn't be able to see this at all. So here's an example of a very drought tolerant turf species also showing that symptom of, of incipient water stress. In summary, incipient water stress can often be seen by these grayish bluish tints to turf grasses. This can be caused by hydrophobic soil conditions so that when you water the soil, it's not actually completely watering the soil underneath your turf grass. To alleviate hydrophobic soil conditions, please refer to the next video in our series, Wetting Agents, where we show the value of using wetting agents in hydrophobic conditions. Thank you for watching.